We're gonna start this video with a good old guided exercise. It's for the sake of understanding the topic of this video. So please stick with me and relax. You can close your eyes if you want. I'm probably not gonna do that. Take a deep breath through your diaphragm. Very, very deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. Just keep doing this. It'll get yourself relaxed and a bit more present. Become involved with each and every inhale and exhale. Put all of your mindfulness into each inhale and exhale. I want you to notice something for me. I want you to notice that the present moment is all that there is. If you're struggling to notice this, ask yourself, is this really true? And observe. The entirety of this present moment is all there is and all that ever will be. When you think about the past, that is an occurrence in the present moment. When you think about the future, that is an occurrence in the present moment. These are concepts that are happening in the present moment. As you become more present and mindful, notice that everything you see around you or everything you experience, every sensation you feel, around you and within you. They are aspects, illustrations of your present experience, illustrations of the present moment. The present moment takes on all these forms. If you return your attention to your breath, it is the present moment taking on the form of your breath. So really, it's not you who's doing the breathing. <laughs> if we're gonna get mystical, it's the present moment. Each and every phenomenon that you observe is merely a wave passing by through this present moment. The entirety of this present moment is an ocean. It is an ocean of experience. And each phenomenon that you see, that you observe, it's just a wave. So really, what is the difference between your experience and the present moment? Try to notice that in your direct raw experience without attaching any labels or categories
ask yourself, what is the difference between my experience and this present moment? If you do this properly, you'll find that there is no difference. The present moment is my experience. The present moment includes me within it. And my experience is the present moment. Now, I want you to slowly come back with me. All right, let's begin with a, uh, a deep quote, so deep and mystical. It's by our favorite guy, Lao Tzu. We love Lao Tzu. He said, what did he say? I forgot. To live in the ancient Tao, you must master the present moment. Something like that. From my perspective, it even goes the other way around. To master the, to master the present moment, you must live in the ancient Tao. That's pretty deep, that's pretty deep. Presence is a pretty big buzzword in spirituality. Not even in spirituality, but like self-help. Uh, I'm not really a fan of buzzwords, but there aren't any other words. For me, there aren't any other words that can encapsulate living in the present moment, such as presence. I mean, it's in the word, right? Presence. You could say mindfulness, I suppose. You could say involvement. You know what? I'm going to use those words, maybe. Presence is going to be in the title, but I'm going to use words like mindfulness and involvement. Maybe I'll use presence here and there. I'm rambling. I'll get onto the video. I don't have a script, so. I don't know what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna tell you this, presence is much more mystical than you think. It's much more profound than you think. Have you realized that all there is is the present moment? I know that you've heard this before. Like, I don't know if you understand the profundity of that. Like, there, all there is is right now. The past is an illusion. The future is an illusion. They're both concepts in your head. When you think of the past, you're just thinking of a concept in the present. <laughs> you're thinking of the past in the present. When you think of the future, you're thinking of the future in the present. I mean, that's like, it's like painfully obvious. But like, once you become aware of this, it's like your mindfulness, your involvement with the entirety of the present moment kind of becomes inevitable. It's like, you think there's nothing but the present moment. And then you like see it. The present moment is all that exists. And then you see it. And it's all that ever will exist. It's all that ever existed, all that exists, and all that will exist. Well, what's my proof? Look. Just look. You know, you take, let me, what, what, what do I have near me? A leaf, a very dry leaf. Me labeling this leaf depends on other things that are not the leaf for me to individualize this thing. It's a very, it's a very quick process though. You're not present because you're, you're putting a filter between yourself and the world by labeling this leaf. When in reality, this thing has no word at all. It's words depend on well, your own mind, right? Another reason you're not present when you label things is because when you label something, you're not focusing on the process of that thing. You're focusing more on what it's done in the past or what its ultimate end is or what its ultimate purpose is. Like a fork or a spoon. You know that in the past you used a spoon to eat cereal. So now you know that its purpose is to use it to eat cereal. Now you do apply that to the present moment, but you veil it. You veil the present moment with your interpretation of that spoon. You're stuck in a limited perspective. Right, like even me using my words to describe the present moment is relative. However, I'm using relative terms to point you towards what is absolute. It's classical in Buddhism to say that Buddhism is pointing to the moon. That's what Buddha, that's basically what Buddhism is. Don't confuse the map with the territory. That's what we always do. But anyway, that quote by Lao Tzu, to master the ancient Tao, you must live in the present. Or no, it's the other way around. To master, to live in the ancient Tao, you must master the present. Yeah, from my perspective, I sense that he doesn't, he's not talking about the Tao as this like very old thing because in other verses, he describes it as eternal. And I think that's what he means by ancient. 
So if you take that verse about mastering the eternal Tao, you must live in the present. That's basically Lao Tzu saying that the present moment is eternal. The present moment is Tao. As a callback to my fate video, it's like, uh, you know, the Tao is the general happenings of the universe or the, the general waves of the universe. Everything is a wave of existence. Ooh, that's deep. Like, and that's what the present moment is. Like, if you take the entirety of the present moment, you're fully present. But if you take the particular relative things of the present moment, what those really are, are waves, to put it metaphorically. Those are waves of the present moment. Those are waves of existence, because what is the present moment than mere existence? It's just like you can't deny the present moment, you can't deny existence. If you deny it, in your denying it, you're invoking existence. Although I don't deny non-existence, but that's for another video. Meditation, right? In spirituality, a common practice for becoming present and involved and mindful is to meditate. It trains your capacity to become present, basically. It trains your awareness and your mindfulness. From what I discovered in my meditations is that the more present you become, the more profound your experience and the more ineffable your experience. Like the more your experience just can't be put into words because that is the inherent truth of the present moment. It's like, it's a wordless thing, even though I am attaching it. Yeah, you get it, you get it. As you become more present, at least what I've discovered is that as I become more present, the veil, the filter, the duality between object and subject, that dissolves completely. There's like a major consequence that comes out of this, and that is consciousness, pure consciousness. When the object and the subject dissolve, the universe becomes your consciousness, and your consciousness becomes the universe. It's a really cool state to be in, although hard to maintain. It's not really your normal mode of cognition. I would say, from speculation at least, there are a rare handful of people who have maintained this. Jesus, Buddha, Lao Tzu, who else? What other sages are there in history? I, 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 can't, I can't think of any other sages right now. So yeah, and basically consciousness becomes the present moment. Everything around you becomes an aspect of your present experience. If I look at this leaf, consciousness manifests itself as a leaf. The present moment manifests itself as this leaf. My present experience forms itself as this leaf. My sensations of this leaf are just illustrations of consciousness. This leaf is just an illustration of the present moment. All right, so the present moment, infinite, eternal, singular, ooh, formless, and therefore takes on all forms. It is your experience. It is experience. It is fate. And ultimately, it is love. Boy, if you don't. But that's for another video. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention one more thing. Presence and happiness, they go hand in hand. Presence equals happiness, and happiness equals presence. There's no way to get around that. As you become more present and more mindful, your happiness will just inevitably start to increase. You'll start to see the beauty of the world around you that you didn't see before. The mundane becomes divine, so to speak. Um, everything becomes magical. You start to swim in the ocean of the present moment. As you adopt this technique of presence in your mundane life, you will see huge benefits in your life. Chores will start to become fun. That's something that I've noticed. I've enjoyed, really thoroughly enjoyed making my bed and doing dishes. The three to four utensils and dishes that I, that I own, <laughs> I wash them very thoroughly and with all of my mindfulness poured into these dishes. The experience is cinematic, to put it poetically. It's like, it's like you're in a slow motion movie and you're like, and you make your life aesthetic for yourself. It's really beautiful. I could, I could almost cry talking about it. I could almost cry talking about washing dishes. That's crazy. And, but there's power in that. There's a lot of power in that. And a lot of people don't really notice this power. Like if you can cry about doing dishes, then like you're just like awesome. That was a bit of an indirect nod to myself. 
just notice as you become more present, you will become more satisfied, more appreciative and more happy. As you adopt mindfulness in your life, just notice this throughout your days. I love you all.